Hi, my name is Jeremy, and welcome to the Classroom Online Micro Lessons. Now, what we're doing today is running through several questions on identification of cations, anions, and gases, also known as qualitative analysis. Now, many students are able to memorize the tables found in their notes, but somehow or other seem to be unable to apply this to answer questions effectively. So if you find yourself struggling with flowchart QA questions, then this just might be the video for you to watch, put your skills to practice, and hopefully clarify your doubts. Now before we get started, I'd like you to pull out your notes um, on identification of cations, anions, and gases. Alright, because what we're doing today is learning how to apply the information given to you in your notes. Um, and if you're able to apply it, then all you need to do is memorize it to do well. Alright, so it's two different skills. Today we're just doing application. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, now um, here you see a flow chart and then you have three unknown substances A, B, and C. Alright. Now, we start with a pale blue solution, <coughs> sorry, and usually if a solution is blue in color, it will contain copper 2 ions. Now, we, we, we go, we're going to go right, arrow on the right here, all right, and notice how we add sodium hydroxide. Now, when we add sodium hydroxide, what you're doing is you're testing for cations. All right, you have two uh, precipitates form, a blue and white precipitate. Now, this means that uh, you have two cations present. All right, uh, now the blue precipitate is usually copper 2 hydroxide. Now the white one, we're not too sure. Uh, white precipitates in your syllabus will include calcium, zinc, or lead 2 plus ions. Now to figure out which cation is present, we look here and it says that you have a colorless filtrate upon addition of excess sodium hydroxide. This means that your white precipitate is soluble in excess. And therefore, you can have either zinc 2 plus or lead 2 plus. Alright, now you add Ki. Now, uh, your yellow precipitate found in your syllabus is usually lead 2 iodide. And this means that you have lead ions present and not zinc ions. All right? But we're not asked to identify the white precipitate, just the yellow precipitate B, which is lead 2 iodide, the blue precipitate C, copper 2 hydroxide. All right? Now finally, we go down the arrow here. All right? We add sodium hydroxide aluminum foil. Now this is a test for nitrates. All right? And if the nitrate ion is present, you will get ammonia gas. Now, ammonia gas is the only alkali gas in your syllabus, and this will turn red limus paper blue. All right, so this is ammonia NH3 gas. Now, to get full marks for this question, you need to spell out all the compounds present. So we start with A, ammonia gas, and then B, lead 2 iodide, all right, and finally C, copper 2 hydroxide. All right, so um, if you are not too sure, um, you can rewind this video and watch it again. If not, we're going to move on to the second example. All right, now here you have four unknown substances, W, X, Y, and Z. All right, uh, same thing. We're just going to start with W, and we're going to go down the arrow on the left. Now, I'm going to repeat myself again. The addition of aqueous ammonia or sodium hydroxide is used to test for the cation. All right, so we're trying to find out here what cation is present in W. Now, once again, if you get a blue precipitate, this means that you have copper 2 hydroxide being formed, meaning to say that W contains copper 2 plus ions. All right, so not too difficult here. Now, if you go down the arrow in the middle, you are testing for an anion. All right, how do I know this? Because we are not adding aqueous ammonia or sodium hydroxide. So if you add anything else, usually you're testing for the anion. So if you flip to your notes on the anions, all right, sodium hydroxide, Aluminum foil warm gently, you're testing for the presence of once again a nitrate ion. The gas form is ammonia gas, alright, and this tells you that W contains the nitrate ion. Alright, so we have now identified W, X, and Y. W is copper 2 nitrate, X is copper 2 hydroxide. I'm just going to write a short form, HYD. And finally, guess Y is ammonia gas. All right. Now, we are left with this reaction here, the addition of magnesium metal. Now, uh, the addition of magnesium metal isn't to identify a cation or anion. This is really a displacement reaction. So it's a bit of a cross chapter. Magnesium is a more reactive metal than copper, and therefore copper will be displaced. So this is copper metal, which is reddish brown in color. So Z is just copper metal. All right. Once again, for practice, you can rewind this video and try it on your own uh, to fill in the blanks. Okay, so if you understand, let's move on to the last and final example. 
Now, uh, for practice sake, you can pause this video and try it on your own first. This one you have um, A, B, C, D, E, F. You have six unknown substances, all right? So pause the video for a while, try filling whatever you can, and then uh, start the video again. Okay, now for me, um, this flow chart here looks a bit more complex because there are many arrows. So I will start with things that I know. Now you don't always have to go forwards. You can go forwards or backwards or sideways. So I'm going to start with something that I know, which is this colorless gas E. Now because the pop sound tells me that this gas is hydrogen gas. All right. Um, I'm going to start with C in the middle. Uh, once again, this is just totally random. The down arrow addition of aqueous ammonia tells me that I'm testing for a cation. All right. So if you are still not too sure, you can flip to your notes, um, look for the cation that is that will produce a green precipitate. Uh, and you will come to realize that this is iron 2 hydroxide, FeOH2. And this tells you that the green solution C must contain Fe2 plus ions. All right. uh, going down the right here, addition of barium nitrate solution is a test for N ion. And which N ion is this? It is the test for the sulfate ion. Now, if sulfate ions are present, you will get a white precipitate of barium sulfate, Okay, which is D. And this tells you that C must contain your sulfate ion which means that solution C is iron 2 sulfate. All right. Now, we, we come here, there's a metallic element. If you recall, elements can either be metals or non-metals. So we know that this is a metal. And what metal is this? This is just iron metal. Why? Because you have iron sulfate being formed. Now, iron metal, um, or rather all metals, react with either water. Sorry, not all metals, but metals. Uh, under the chapter of metals, metals will either react with water, steam, or, get, uh, or acids. All right? So this really depends on the reactivity of the metal. Now iron metal can react with acids. Now what acid will B be? Now if you look here, this is a sulfate. So we're going to um, guess that this is sulfuric acid. Okay, And let's check. All right? When iron metal reacts with sulfuric acid, you will get iron sulfate and hydrogen gas. So it, it really works out. All right? So I hope this uh, these three questions have helped you to identify um, your weaknesses and how to move forward to score as many marks as you can in your exam. Just to wrap up, right, I'd like to end off with four points. Now when you add sodium hydroxide or aqueous ammonia, you're always testing for a cation. All right? If you add any other thing, usually you're testing for the anion. All right? uh, ammonia gas is the only alkali gas in your syllabus, so if you see this gas turning moist, red litmus paper blue, it must be ammonia gas. Um, to obtain chloride salts, um, any metal chloride, sodium chloride, iron chloride, magnesium chloride, you add hydrochloric acid. To obtain a sulfate salt, magnesium sulfate, iron sulfate, copper sulfate, you add sulfuric acid. And finally, to obtain a nitrate salt, you add nitric acid. All right, I hope this short video has helped you. And if you enjoy this, uh, do check back for our next video. Once again, this is Jeremy from The Classroom, uh, wishing you all the best in your uh, studies.